This is the spot. We can cut the half Koofa loose here. Flies. It's a half goofa. Sounds much happier now. And hey, the storm's gone. Aye, perhaps we'll finally earn some goodwill from our dark elf friends after all. Look, Father, thanks for bringing us out here, but you don't have to do this kind of stuff just to keep my mind off Ragnarok, you know? This was not a distraction. No? Then why are we really out here? Have you ever considered? He just wants to spend time with you, lad, while he still can. Really? We do not know what lies ahead, but if Ragnarok approaches, I wish to enjoy the time we have left. I... I don't know what to say. Thank you for bringing us out here. I'm glad we did this. As am I. There's something I'm not sure I quite understand. In the Ragnarok prophecy Odin knows, all the realms get destroyed, including Asgard. In the version Groa kept secret, Asgard still falls. Wouldn't Odin have tried to prevent it either way? What difference did her life really make? Brother, wait. Do you notice that? Those were Enriar? I thought Enriar were just spirits in Valhalla until Ragnar comes. They were no spirits. Indeed, brother. Odin appears to have found a loophole. Activated his forces early as a standing army. Perhaps something he could only do without any honest Valkyries around to stand in his way. I've been considering your question about whether Groa's deception made a difference. I think of it this way. When it comes to subverting prophecy, knowledge is power. Without the full picture and context, the finer details can lead you to tragically incorrect interpretations. Back in my own life, I was privy to the operations of a certain coven of heath witches who were keen on destabilizing the government. They picked an influential thane, an otherwise loyal man, and fed him a story of his own ascension to king. They dressed it up in enough details they knew would come to pass, so when they did, the Thane took it as confirmation. Hold. We will finish later. <laughs> Turning to my anecdote about the Heath Witches, they fed the Thane a prophecy of his ascension to king. 
Next thing you know, he's helping matters along. He murders his king, sleeping under his own roof. Murders many he once called friends, too, thinking them fated to oppose him. Then, for a finishing touch, the witches revisit this usurper. With just a few details structured ever so misleadingly, they convinced the fool he was invulnerable to all threats. Physical or magical? Aye, aye, but twas not so for him. All turned into a rather magnificent bloodbath as they go. The Thane ends up without his head and a name so cursed, none dare speak it. All thanks to a subtly deceptive prophecy. More bloody drogger. me of tales of a cruel empress, one too angry to die. We will see. big dwarf statue we saw. Who was he? All these Stonefoot, warden of Spatelfine, and used his wisdom and might to imprison some of the most dangerous creatures in all the realm. to hear about his travels to the lands beyond the seas. You wish to travel the world? I don't know. Maybe. See new places. Find out more about... myself.
didn't get a chance to say before. I like your story about the Thane and the Heath Witches. You really gotta write these stories down one day, Mimir. Well, I try. Jaw tends to get sore, but thank you, lad. Looks like a lot of the sand is cleared up. But there's another storm out that way. You think that means... No, not half too far. What's that? A diagram for a sword hilt. Perhaps we should show it to one of the dwarves. They'll know what to do. This sounds weird, but can you tell me again what happens when someone dies? Every living thing has a soul, and every soul has four parts. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Direction steers the souls of giants, dwarves, elves, and animals toward the lake of souls in Alfheim, where all the parts may be absorbed back into Alfheim's great light. So that's where Fenrir is? The lake of souls? 
So long as his soul still has its direction, aye, it's well on its way. Shield holding up black. It's good. I always knew Sinji was a great blacksmith. This magical shield. It just feels natural. The shield is well made, but it is you who wields it with skill. Thanks. Father, what was Spartan training like? Unforgiving. Is that why you didn't train me like one? Did you not think I could handle it? I did not think you should have had to. Thanks. Ah! <laughs> 
You're building quite the collection of poetry, brother. Why so surprised? My people are known for their culture. Not surprised. Esteem. What's the deal with Odin's ravens? They can just transport him anywhere? Except for the realm between realms, thankfully. Why? Harder to find, thanks to dwarven enchantments and Yggdrasil's very own nature. Hmm. Lucky us. ago you mentioned Odin's ravens. What's to stop him from using them to pop into existence and kidnap anybody he wants? Consent. The only way to travel by Odin's ravens is by your own choice. Oh, it's not so bad then. A harp. I can play beautifully, you know. I do not. I would prefer it remained that way.
said souls come in four parts. Does that mean you can lose some of your soul? But not all of it? Aye. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Lose it. One of them, the entire being suffers. Still, sometimes luck alone is enough. Just ask your father. My success does not come from luck. Ah, the refrain of the eternally lucky. Father, what's the biggest thing you've ever fought? I do not know. You can't remember? Why do you ask? I don't know. So we can compare? It is not a competition. I mean, not yet. Surprised to see you out here, Sindri. You must hate the sand. Oh, it is the worst. But with Brock banned from Alfheim, it's up to me to keep you ship shape and sharp. So why is Brock banned from Alfheim? Oh, that's, um, I don't know if, well, do you know what a juicy Noken is? No. Well, thanks to Brock, the elves sure do. Uh, what is a juicy... No.